With hindsight, we should never have negotiated with bandits, says Governor Masari, while Sheikh Gumi says we shouldn't use military force on bandits. Plus, INEC is insisting on electronic transmission of election results, but the National Assembly has other ideas. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anikon. The Katsina State Governor Aminu Masari has said that the benefit, uh, well, the benefit of hindsight is government should have never negotiated with bandits, let alone, to grant, uh, let alone grant them amnesty. Meanwhile, Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi has declared the recent military force going on in Zamfara State against the bandits and herdsmen as counterproductive. Well, let's get to talking about this. Joining me to discuss this is political commentator Adeni Kunu, security expert Dixon Osage, and social reformer Andy Akpotiwe. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Great. Uh, so I'm obviously going to start with you, um, Dixon, because you're a security person. And we have been going at this issue of insecurity for months. Uh, I, I think we, we spoke just, uh, I think, last week uh, about another recent um, happening, uh, you know, in terms of banditry. But let's look at Governor Masari's perspective. He seems to be um, taking some steps back and, of course, looking at the situation. And he obviously is saying that if they had handled this better, um, we probably wouldn't have been where we are today. Uh, but yes, with the benefit of hindsight, we now know that what had previously transpired shouldn't have. But where do we go from here? Well, thank you very much, Mary Ann, for having me this evening. Uh, of the truth, I believe uh, uh, the recent uh, uh, waste of uh, Governor, uh, Governor Masari, uh, Castino State, Masari, uh, you know, sometime last year, uh, we uh, sent some warnings to him uh, that uh, he must be very careful in negotiating with these criminal elements. Uh, because uh, bargaining with the devil uh, is a sign of weakness. When you want to bargain with the devil, uh, you must be prepared for two entrapments, uh, for psychological entrapment and uh, emotional trap. Uh, you can't uh, trust uh, negotiating with uh, terrorists uh, to yield more results. These guys are their devil. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they deserve uh, to be eliminated. And, uh, I... I agree with the government now because uh, you can't uh, uh, negotiate with terrorists. Even if you want to negotiate or bargain with the devil, uh, you must bargain on the side of strength and not on the side of weakness. Uh, but here, yeah, our government, uh, we are very quick in bargaining with these guys on the side of weakness. On the side of weakness, in the essence that uh, these guys that are holding us uh, hostage, uh, we don't have anything to hold back to, you know, uh, cause them to surrender, cause them uh, or push them to the wall. So when we want to bargain with these guys, we must bargain from the side of strength. Just like what is happening in Zafara State now, uh, the high-powered military bombardment uh, is really, really <laughs> yielding results in the, in the, in the Northwest. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in touch with uh, the operations there, and I'm so proud of the military. This is the military I know. This is the military I understand. And this is the military I serve. So for me, I think uh, uh, the decision the governor made some few years back was erroneous, but I'm happy he has uh, taken a departure from such decision. Uh, they must come back to the drawing board and uh, draw a line on how to tackle the state of insecurity. But Mary Ann, I must tell you for free uh, that anything that poses threat to human life uh, must not be substituted, must not be replaced. It must be eliminated. And that is what the military and the government needs to do. They must eliminate the threats. Uh, talking about, before we even get to the el elimination part of it, because, I mean, this is not a, a normal warfare. This is more like a guerrilla warfare. But before we get to that part, you talked about, um, you know, the governor retracing his steps and, you know, the, the fact that you're in agreement. But these bandits have become used to being either negotiated with or getting monies. And that's why they've even gotten into high-level kidnapping which is now the order of the day, especially for a state like Kaduna State, where they keep doing it because they know that people will keep paying. How easy will it be to take a step back now when you, they already know that, look, 
they're used to the monies. They know that they, no matter how long it takes, money is going to come to them. How easy will it be to, you know, draw that line in the sand and say, we're, not, we're no longer doing this? Uh, and if you do take that position, you have to have other plans in place, don't you, to be able to deal with these guys because they will always look for other ways to try to entrap the government or even the people in the state to still continue to find a place or uh, grounds for negotiations. Oh, well, uh, Mary, uh, that's an intelligent question, but uh, let me assure you uh, that uh, to the end of time, uh, criminality or crime can never be eliminated. Uh, we are going to live with crime uh, to the end of time. Understand? But uh, one thing about crime is that uh, we must uh, mitigate such crime to as low as reasonable, acceptable in a given society. Uh, for me, uh, if the government or the governor of Casino, uh, Casino State uh, is restricting this stuff, it's a good one. But coming by your question, how are we going to, you know, uh, <laughs> kick off these guys, having uh, exposed them to uh, some monetary, uh, monetary inducements? Well, it's very, very uh, easy and sometimes uh, tactical. Tactical in the sense that uh, uh, the government needs to declare war against these guys. Yes, we're going to pay the price, supreme price, but some people will pay the supreme price, uh, but we must declare. Uh, because if we don't eliminate this now, Mary Ann, uh, Nigeria is going to be the capital world of uh, uh, kidnapping. Uh, as it is now, I think Nigeria is the capital world of keep kidnapping because uh, we see uh, most of these criminal elements uh, uh, illegally transporting our people from school, our students from school, over 100, 200, 300 people will be transported at the same time in a given society. I wonder if we are still in a country called Nigeria. But uh, let us not write Nigeria up. Nigeria it will still bounce back. But for us to bounce back, we must call the spade the spade. We must also uh, ensure that uh, we, we, we fit in or, you know, uh, embolden our criminal justice system, you know, that will be able to uh, take care of most of this criminal element and also. Uh, finally, we must also look at, uh, you know, decimating these guys. Uh, you know, the government must decimate them by day, decimate them by night, deny them sleep by day, deny them sleep by night. When we give them this high-powered decimation, I think uh, we'll be able to mitigate the high level of the kidnapping. Talking about, going back to the um, elimination that you were making reference to, um, can you really eliminate the type of terrorism that we are facing today in Nigeria? Um, I mean, we know it has become a hydra-headed monster of sorts. It's metamorphosed into different things, unknown gunmen, bandits, and, and even Boko Haram in itself is on the other side, uh, you know, of the Northeast. So can you outrightly say you are totally eliminating it? Decimation, yes, to an extent. Knowing what is happening within Nigeria and the kind of terrorism that we're experiencing, and of course the gun running, right down through the Sahel region, is it easy to really just eliminate it? Well, sure, yeah. Security is achievable, Mary Ann. Uh, security is achievable. Uh, Nigeria, uh, if you look at the ethnography of Nigeria, uh, we're sitting on a 923,000 square kilometers. Uh, Zampara State uh, is, I think, the fourth uh, most largest state in Nigeria, and Kastina State is also uh, having a high-powered uh, landmarks. Uh, so uh, when we talk about elimination, uh, we're not talking about the military or the government going out to eliminate them immediately. We are talking about the threat here. You know, anything that poses threats to human life must be eliminated. Eliminate such threats. Don't allow that threat uh, to flourish. Don't allow that threat uh, to grow day by day. Not allowing the threat to grow by day is to draw the line and say, hey, guys, we are not going to pay ransom for criminality. We are not going to pay ransom for kidnapping of Nigeria. Well, I, I, I school up in the, in the North. Uh, I, I was born and bred in the North. I school up in Sokoro State. Uh, and uh, over 35 years ago, I can still remember the days of uh, uh, the Metasinian insurrection. So Nigeria has not been faced uh, with insurrection just uh, of this recent years. It's just a long time failure of our leaders. That is why we have arrived at this stage. So for us to eliminate this uh, threat, we must draw a, draw, we must draw a line between uh, the Nigerian state and this criminal element that, hey, this country is a no-no. When you go after the Nigerians, when you kidnap Nigerians, Death penalty is the consequence. And in exception of that, for us to achieve this as well, we need to also look at uh, border security and also securing uh, the, the, the state borders and the national borders. Because a borderless nation is a known nation. A borderless state is a known no state. If we are carrying out activities or uh, anti-kidnapping uh, activities against these guys and our border and our uh, state borders and national borders are porous, 
uh, we just like we are fighting an empty war. So we must come out with all components. The political components must be ap applied, the uh, military components, tactical, strategic components, and administrative components. The administrative component here is that, hey, there must be a policies and procedures drawn by the state government uh, to ensure that this criminal element uh, does not excel and flourish in their criminal activities. And obviously not, man. Uh, they can't just hold the Nigerian government hostage. We have the army, we have the navy, we have the air force, and some group of criminal elements are holding a great nation like Nigeria hostage. He said, no, no, they must be eliminated with strategic, uh, from strategic and the tactical point of view. Now that we see Governor Massary owning up to the fact that he was wrong in believing that bandits were truly repentant, do we see a Governor El Rufai, who also falls in that category, of you know, negotiating with bandits, paying monies to these bandits and, and causing there to be even a conduit of sorts between these bandits and the government. Do we see him shifting grounds? Because we also know that um, Kaduna it has become a serious kidnapping field for these bandits. I, I see the both of them shifting ground because uh, the two governors uh, in the previous time have been like a classic card in administration of their, uh, in, admi in administering uh, uh, security policy in their state, you know, that I, I think uh, they were scared or maybe afraid of these terrorists. I don't know the reason why, uh, but they have seen the imminent threat and danger this is posing to the state and survival of the people of their various states and uh, all the state governors. I am happy with their actions now because uh, they, <laughs> they, they've seen that, uh, hey, these guys are coming home, coming home in this essence that uh, these guys are really coming back uh, to even hit at uh, this uh, governor's families, senator's family. Last two weeks, a senator's son was killed in Kaduna State. Uh, yes, uh, Kaduna State uh, harbors one of the highest uh, powers of the military. We have most of the military institutions uh, in Kaduna State. I was training Kaduna State. We have the Nigerian Defense Academy. We have the uh, Depot the Nigerian Army. We have Air Force Institution and other military uh, formation. And most of these peri uh, peripheral threats happening uh, in the uh, in Kaduna State should have. Uh, Given the military uh, within that environment, you know, to carry out the risk management uh, processes. But they were so relaxed, and uh, this criminal element went to the Nigerian Defense Academy. Uh, the pride of our military uh, killed uh, some officers in, in the military academy and cutted away one of the senior officers. That was an aberration of the Nigerian Defense Academy. That was a shame uh, to the military leader. But it's not, it's not too late. I have advised them to carry out a risk management, uh, a risk assessment of the Defense Academy and ascertain uh, what the problem is and the vulnerability analysis to proper uh, mitigation factors so that such kind of uh, shameful act uh, does not tra transpire the game. Castina State, uh, they must also, uh, the governor should fall back to his chief security officer uh, to advise him on the uh, uh, co combating terrorism, you know. It, it's not the duties of governors to just come on board and speak. Let, let them fall back to professionals to advise them on the processes in which they will be able uh, to carry out uh, mitigation factors and uh, war against these bandits uh, or terrorists, because they are terrorists anyway, because you rightly say that we call them bandits or non-government. We must stop calling some group of people or non-government. Uh, they are non-government. When you call them a non-government, that tells you the inefficiency and ineffectiveness of our security agents. You need to unmax these guys for us to know uh, that truly they are non gunmen. So, if we unmax them, then go after these guys. I'm telling you, I know the capacity of the military, the Miriam. The military are capable, but I want them to stop this friendly uh, match. They I, I'm shocked so that much. you're saying that the military is capable. In terms of what? Because I have spoken with retired military officials, um, air vice marshals, and all of that. And the, most of the time, are talking about the fact that the military is overstretched, the fact that they are fighting on different fronts and there needs to be more, an increase in manpower, there needs to be an increase in, um, you know, the wages of these people, um, welfare and, and every other thing that they need, including um, the, 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 um, the guns and the ammunition that they need to fight this war. So when you say the army is capable, I'm not in any way trying to say that the army is not capable, but what is the strength of the army? as opposed to the kind of war, the warfare that they're faced with? Okay, uh, Mary Ann, uh, this question is really, really uh, uh, diplomatic and uh, sensitive. Sensitive in the sense that, oh yes, when the uh, Boko Haram incident sprang up in 2009, the Nigerian government were quickly, uh, quickly projected uh, the military. Uh, the military uh, might, you don't just project the military uh, at any given situation. That is mismanagement of the military. Uh, in the past 12 years, the Nigerian military has been mismanaged 
by our government, and uh, that is regrettable. And that is why uh, they, they are overstretched. Overstretched in the sense that not that they don't have the capacity or the arms and ammunition to decimate this criminal element, but I have seen an absence in political will. I have seen an absence in motivation, like rightly said about some generals we have interviewed. I've also seen an absence, you know, in uh, enlisting the soldier and retaining the family. Enlisting the soldier and retaining the family simply means that uh, every child of a soldier must be taken care of. Every wife of a soldier must be taken care of. Maybe and when you go to most of the military barracks across the country, um, it, it's so sad to let you know that we have a, a lot of widows uh, at our military base. Uh, what is the cause? What is the cause? Uh, the cause was because uh, the military uh, really uh, did not go out uh, fully, fully geared up to uh, you know neutralize uh, this criminal element. You know, but for me, it's not too late. Oh yes, uh, we must also look at uh, uh, arms and ammunition. Okay, but uh, may, I, may I shock you that arms and ammunition? Uh, perhaps might not eliminate uh, terrorism, except you look at the live wear, because in a given war, uh, we have the live wear, we have the software, and we have the hardware. Uh, oh, yes, you kind of, you kind of project more points for the live wear and the hardware. What about the live wear? The live wear are the soldiers. So once our government start looking into the welfare of soldiers, I am telling you, uh, they will defeat these criminal elements. I also spoke to a form, a retired um, you know, officer in the military who spoke about particularly what, what's happening in Kaduna State, and he pointed that the major problem in Kaduna State is the synergy, the lack of synergy between government and security agencies. Uh, he met, I, I remember very, very vividly when he said that the government seems to be speaking a different language uh, as opposed to, you know, security agents in the country. And this is why it's very difficult to put an end to the situation there. So I ask again, do you think that Governor El Rufai might want to retrace his steps and not just about the issue of um, negotiations with these Boko, uh, uh, sorry, bandits? Um, do you see an, a Governor El Rufai working with security operatives and not just talking tough, but going back to the drawing board to see what they can do to deal with the situation? Because, like I said, Kaduna State keeps churning out numbers of people. Either they're being kidnapped from schools or they're being kidnapped from hospitals. I mean, the list is endless. If a government seems not to be uh, in sync with security operatives, does that not make their job even tougher? For oh, sure. It makes their job uh, tougher. But uh, for Governor Erufai, uh, Mary Ann, uh, I have closely monitored that governor for one or two, for some few years back. And uh, I, I observed some few years ago, I, I had really, uh, you know, predicted uh, uh, what really, uh, what's happening now in Kaduna State, uh, because the governor uh, sometimes was like, uh, you know, slowed down, was, was slowing down in uh, carrying, uh, acting against this uh, criminal element, and uh, sometimes make some statements that are really worrisome. Uh, well, for me, I will not take him by those statements, it's, it's, it's bygone, but I, I, I want to believe that uh, you see what's happening, it's a total failure to his leadership, it's a total failure to the state of Kaduna State, to, to Kaduna State, and uh, we must also understand that uh, the military has subjected or submitted uh, to, to civil authority. Uh, for the fact that the military has submitted, uh, has submitted to military authority, uh, uh, civil authority does not mean that they don't have their own, uh, uh, what they call, uh, uh, political will are to engage uh, this enemy that are posing threat against the Nigerian state. Because if the military want to sit down back home and await the governor to give them orders or this president to give them orders before they carry out any actions against criminal activities within Kaduna State, uh, we will keep on losing more lives. You know, we need to fall back to the administration uh, proper, uh, uh, procedures in the sense that uh, we need to draw a line. What should the military do in the case of threat? What should the military do? In case of any given situation, do they have to wait for the governor to give them an instruction? Do they have to wait for the president to give them an instruction? Oh, yes, before the military are called on board to carry out any uh, internal security threats, uh, that threat must have overpowered uh, the, uh, the uh, presence of the Nigerian police because the Nigerian police are solely responsible in, uh, in mitigating crime across the state. But uh, I'm sorry to say I love the Nigerian police, uh, but I've seen most of the Nigerian police in action being transactional policing system. Uh, they are really not doing effective policing duties, uh, protecting the highlights, escorting of airlights, and uh, leaving the Nigerian people at risk. So the Nigerian police uh, need to be revamped. Uh, I must tell you the truth, we need to fall back to policing duties. But we, but we hear this all the time, Osage. We hear this all the time. Every time we have a new Inspector General of Police, 
we hear about police reform. So the police is going to be rebranded. Oh, they're taking off all the checkpoints. And then in less than a month, it's back to status quo. As we speak, um, there's so many complaints in Lagos alone uh, about police harassment all over again. The same issues that led to the NSAS movement is repeating itself. So you telling me that the police needs to be revamped, it's like pouring water on the back of a chicken, isn't it? Oh, sure. Uh, Mary, uh, you see, uh, uh, policing duties are achievable. Uh, the, the two problems uh, the Nigerian police have been faced with, just like you rightly said, each time we have a new IG, uh, some IG will come on board, fire for fire, bullet for bullet, head for head, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, such kind. Name calling does not uh, mitigate crime. We are talking about actions and, uh, and police procedures are uh, put in place. Uh, one of the problems the Nigerian police are suffering from Mary uh, uh, is uh, command negligence, uh, just like you rightly said, command negligence. Uh, in the sense that uh, we are not holding our police leaders accountable for incidents that are, are transpiring. You understand? So the Nigerian police uh, must uh, be, be, be held accountable. The respect of harassment by some police. Oh, yes, let's not just uh, say the Nigerian police in totality. You will have some excellent uh, police officers. But most of the problem we are facing is from the uh, lower cadre. I think that's where discipline comes to play. Uh, the Nigerian police are suffering from fire, uh, lack of fire discipline. Uh, at any given time, a policeman want to point his gun uh, at you. At any given time, you want to harass you with his guns. You don't try that in the military. In the military, you point your gun at any, any civilian, you'll be dismissed from service. I know that for sure. But we need to revisit discipline in the Nigerian police and also revisit command and negligence. Command negligence in the sense that every DPO from the grassroots must be held accountable for the misconduct of their men. And IGP should not just come and utter statements after one month, like you rightly said, and yes, fall back. So okay. everybody must come on board to ensure the Nigerian police. Hello, all right. Well, thank you very much, Osage. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Uh, Dixon Osage is a security expert. Apologies. Our other guests were having uh, internet connection issues and we weren't, were not able to have them join this conversation. Thank you so much, Dixon, for being part of this conversation. Very much. Thank you. And thank you for all you do for the Nigerian states. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll talk about the National Assembly stands on electronic transmission of results and where INEC also stands on this issue. Stay with us. <laughs>